people aren't always gonna like you. They're not always gonna understand you. Um, they're not always gonna agree with the choices that you make, but at the end of the day, if you know in your heart that you and God have come together, you've prayed over this, you've asked for his guidance, and he's leading you in this direction, then you've gotta go that direction because that's it. That's all you have really at the end of the day when it's all over and it's all said and done. It's this relationship, it's this walk with Jesus. That is my rock. I'm an author, an entrepreneur, uh, a wife, a mom of eight children, a homeschool teacher. Uh, I jokingly call myself a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I really just love sharing my life, the incredible things that God has done in my life. Um, I share about all of that faith and family and adoption and homeschooling and all of those things on two different YouTube channels as well as a blog that I have. I talk a lot about the idea of love without borders, love beyond borders. And for me, that's really just this idea that like God showed me that my life didn't have to fit into a box. It didn't have to follow a checklist and that there was just so much beauty to be found on the other side, beyond those borders of what I had always perceived as the way my life was supposed to look. So I really spent a lot of years just kind of making sure that my life fit inside a checklist, fit inside the box, um, that I was doing everything I was supposed to do for this sort of like safe and happy life. You know, I think as a sort of good Christian girl, I pictured that I would get married and uh, buy a house and have, you know, maybe a couple of kids and that that would be the, the sort of gateway to the happy life. And really what I found was that as I sort of checked those boxes, I still found that like God was pulling me to something else. He was pulling me to something a little bit different, something that didn't fit inside those lines. If I could go back and say something to my younger self, uh, particularly maybe my, my teenage self, there's so many things I would want to say to her because that girl was such a people pleaser to the point that it was almost debilitating at times, not being able to make decisions for myself, not being able to decide what I wanted for my life. Um, I just sort of lived to make everyone else around me happy and proud of me. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But the idea that life is a checklist and we just check off the boxes and go through the motions um, is something that I don't think leads to a fulfilled life and leads us down the path that God has for us. And once God really shook up my life and showed me that this is wonderful and amazing and I've, I've blessed you with these things, but this is not all I have for you. I have more for you and I need you to follow me. I need you to come with me. I need you to do what I'm asking you to do. Um, it really just completely changed my life and set it on a totally different course that I never ever would have predicted for myself. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt scared. I felt scared a lot of times. I felt a little anxious, I felt nervous. It was mostly this idea of not knowing what was to come, this idea of stepping out of the perceived safety and into the unknown um, and following Jesus there wherever he was taking me, just following right behind him and looking for that next open door. So learning to embrace the unexpected parts of my life has definitely been a journey for me, um, but really God has shown me how we kind of have these mountain peaks and we have these valley floors and that they're really both a part of our individual stories and that, you know, we're not going to make it through this life unscathed. We're not going to get out of this life without bruises and scars, um, but learning to see those things as part of this story that he's writing for our lives. I feel like for me, that's how I found the, the best ability to sort of embrace those unexpected things is to recognize them as all a part of his greater story and his greater plan for our lives. And sometimes it's really hard when he's leading us to something that maybe we, we don't think we would normally choose for ourselves. And for me, this, this sort of act of faith and following him into these unknowns, it's almost like a muscle. You know, the more that I use it and the more that I trust him, 
Um, and then I get on the other side and I see that like, okay, we're okay. We made it through this. We're still here. This was really hard, but there's so much beauty on the other side. And you know, being on sort of the other side of that now and being able to look back and see all of those things and how they conspired together um, to create my story, it's something that I can really look at and say, I can see God's fingerprints all over this. I can see his fingerprints all over my life. And there are so many things, my children, my family, um, that, that I wouldn't have. And they're such incredible blessings. And I don't know that I would have just set out and said, yes, that's what I want. I'm going to choose that. But it's, you know, but seeing how God has threaded that all together, um, I just look back and realize I just need to take my hands off. Like I need to take my hands off the wheel and let him have control because the story that he's written for my life is so much better than anything I ever could have written for myself. I just have this full trust and faith in knowing that I am in the palm of his hand and whatever plan he has for my life is perfect, not because not because it looks perfect to the world or to everyone else around me, but it's because it's the plan that he has for me. Mm -hmm.